It's a giant! <laughs> oh, that poor guy had high hopes. He thought he's gonna get him a good meal. What's going on, guys? This is Gene Jensen. And what I want to talk to you today is not about catching tiny bass, but it's about fishing the Texas rig. The Texas rig. I'm telling you, if you guys are new to bass fishing, this is the rig you need to start with. This is the one I always recommend to new guys. Now, if you have been fishing for a while and you haven't figured out or learned how to fish a Texas rig, it's it's time. This it's just time guys i'm telling you the texas rig is the basic way to to fish a, a any soft plastic we'll dig into that in just a minute but what i'm saying is it's an all-terrain vehicle of, of of bass fishing rigs it can be used out of a boat kayak bank fishing it's just the, it's the first thing you need to learn because it leads into other style of baits so what is a texas rig a texas rig is the most popular way and a very basic way to introduce a soft plastic to wherever a bass lives be it in thick cover on flats anywhere you name it it is an all-terrain vehicle of bass fishing all right so what i want to talk about is i want to talk about each individual component of a texas rig um to start off with i want to talk about the hooks now i use three different style of worm hooks i use a an extra wide gap hook and i'll leave a link down in the description to all these things so you can look them up on tackle warehouse it is my affiliate link just so you know Okay, this is an offset round bend hook or an offset hook. You see, this is what makes it an offset, that thing right there. An EWG is also an offset. Just it holds a, wider, a thicker plastic. The one I use most of the time these days is this one right here, a straight shank. Uh, it's, a, it's a Gamagatsu G Finesse uh, light wire flipping hook. I use it because I think it's the best hook for kayak fishing. You get positive hook sets. It's, there's so many positives to it if you're fishing out of a kayak that take away the negatives and not having a, a good powerful hook set um, due to a, a lightweight kayak, a kayak. But anyway, those are the three hooks that I use. The sinkers. A bullet sinker. This right here is a Strike King bullet sinker. It's tungsten. You can buy them in tungsten. You can buy them in lead. What I recommend is you get several different weights. I've got an eighth ounce right here, real tiny one, and I have eighth all the way up to half ounce in my regular box. And when you start talking about a technique called punch in, which is a totally different deal, but it's still a Texas rig, you're looking at three quarter ounce, one ounce, all the way up to two ounce weights. But that's a whole different technique. I don't even talk about it. Anyway, so we're gonna talk about just the basic deal. Eighth ounce. Uh, 3 16th ounce, quarter ounce, uh, what else? 5 16th, 3 8 and half ounce are the weights that I keep in my tackle box all the time, just depending on what I want to do. Another thing that I keep in my box is are called pegs. Most of the time I have my Texas rig, my weight pegged. And what pegging is, all right, so typically a Texas rig is like this. It's got it to where the weight is, is loose and everything else. Well, a peg is a little thing you slide over top of the over top of the line just before you put it on, or just before you tie it up. You slide over the line and then you put the, the sinker. I won't go to that in a minute, but it keeps that sinker from sliding up and down the line. Now, when I would use a peg, and when I do use a peg, it was when I feel like I need to keep that weight up against the bait. When I'm flipping into heavy cover, into lay downs, into bushes, into grass, any kind of heavy cover, I try to peg it. Other than that, I don't really need to do it. Sometimes it's just I just am too lazy and I just don't take it off from the, the day before or what I was doing before. So I tend to always have one on there. But if you do find that you're you're getting bit and you're setting the hook and the fish aren't no longer have it in their mouth, nine times out of ten you can solve that by taking the peg off or not having the sinker pegged or go to a smaller bait. But that's a different thing. But I'm, with with pegging, a lot of times, especially in, in really high pressured lakes, if the bass feels that sinker, that hard sinker, it automatically knows what it is and spits it back out. You know, if I'm in a a real high pressured lake i will try to uh to remove that or i'll remember to remove that peg but they really do come in handy okay so the hook that i recommend that you start with is uh your your extra wide gap your ewg straight shank is great and everything else but if you're just learning this technique go with an ewgs because just because it accepts a whole lot of a uh, whole range of plastics thick all the way to thin and and it's a lot less pro troublesome with snags and things like that just to be a little bit less uh frustrating start with an EWG. The sinker I'm going to use, I, always, I almost always use a 3 three eighths ounce to start with and I'll go light if I need it to fall slower. I'm, there's a, lots of reasons we'll talk about it in a minute about how it, you know, what, why to use a lightweight one. Pretty simple, you take your main line coming off your fishing rod, slide your bullet weight on, and then tie your hook on. That's all it is. 
Now I have two different knots that I tie when I'm tying li line to a to a hook or a, or a lure and stuff. A, a Palomar knot is what I tie with braided line, and I tie it tie an improved clinch knot with fluorocarbon. The only thing you got to worry about with fluorocarbon is burning the knot. If you tighten it down wrong or hard or anything else like that, it can actually weaken up your knot. But I tie that improved clinch knot, and I'll leave a link to how to do that up here. And my trick with fluorocarbon is to push that knot down with my thumb as I'm tightening it. I don't recommend biting your line with your teeth. My dentist gets mad at me all the time. <laughs> but anyway, so that's the Texas rig. That's basically how it's rigged up. Now let's talk about putting the soft plastic on. I'm a, I took that rage bug off. And in the fall, I use creature baits. I use uh, beaver style baits, small compact. I've gone from the, the long worm to, you know, to smaller stuff. The bait fish are smaller. The bass are feeding on just about anything, but they tend to want something a little bit smaller, a little bit more action. So I'm going to do this once and I'm going to all these links and stuff are either going to be up in that little box, but YouTube limits me to the number I can I can have, so I'll have some down in the description as well. But how to put a hook in a worm it'll be, will be one of them. You just put that straight down, come out the side. As you're bringing it down to the, to the offset, rotate that hook 180 degrees. And I lay the hook down alongside of it to see where it's going to go in. And I want to go all the way across that bait. Till the hook comes out the other side. This is why an EWG is so nice. It's because you don't have to worry about angles and things like that that you do with a straight shank. And then that hook can either lay like this, or you can do what's called text posing or skin hooking, where you just kind of tuck that tip in just like that. Bait's nice and straight, and you're ready to go fishing. And a Texas rig can you can hook any soft plastic lure to a texas rig any soft plastic lure if you find one in the parking lot at the boat ramp you can hook if it's not all torn up you can hook it on a on a texas rig and go out and fish it let's talk about rods there is not a specific rod that is perfect for a texas rig it's all about what weight you're throwing kind of your own personal pre preference you can get by with a medium power rod a medium heavy power rod or a heavy power rod depending on what you're doing the one i rigged up in the beginning of this video was a heavy seven foot heavy now the one that i recommend you use is a seven foot three or seven foot plus medium heavy um it is a great texas rig rod and a great all-around rod um the real an eight three to one is the one i use all the time for texas rig just so i can get like you know pick up line fast get another cast in or maybe if the bass picks it up and swims at me i can catch up to him just better to have a high speed reel than like a six or even a, a five would be miserable i would like to i'd want to choke myself trying to reel a fish in as slow as that that reel is but anyway a good medium heavy rod good high speed reel is is perfect for this all right so the line that i use i use fluorocarbon 99 percent of the time uh braid i'll use when i'm fishing like real heavy grass like down in florida and that kind of stuff when i'm when i've got to rip and pull the bass out of the grass most of the time i'm fishing between uh, with a medium heavy rod 15 pound fluorocarbon i might up might up at the 17 pound fluorocarbon if i'm fishing a lot of rocks and that kind of stuff just to increase my abrasion resistance but mostly just 15. if you want to use monofilament i wouldn't recommend it but it's because there's so much stretch in monofilament you know the inside of a bass's mouth is like is like leather it's really hard in certain places in the mouth to get a hook to penetrate and so you really need as, as much uh, power behind your hook set as you can get. And yes, monofilament will work, but there's just so much stretch in that line, it's hard to get a good positive hook set. Now, if you're if you're stuck on, on monofilament and you don't want to switch to fluorocarbon because of the, the cost, and then if you, you buy the really cheap stuff that it's just got so much memory and it's just miserable to fish, I understand. Now, Seaguar just came out with this new stuff from a, a basically it's their beginner fluorocarbon and it's called basics it's like ten dollars a spool it's it's not very expensive at all and it's pretty decent fluorocarbon um if you're a guy who's used to the really really high-end fluorocarbon you may not like it uh just because the properties are a little bit different but what's nice about cigar is they control a hundred percent of the production of the resin that they make fluorocarbon with they're the only company that has that that power um per se and so they're able to produce this nine dollar or ten dollar spool of fluorocarbon that's actually a really good fluorocarbon it's it's not bad at all so 
go check that out. I'll leave it down in the description. Yes, that was a plug, but I think that if you're you're on the fence about using fluorocarbon because of the cost, there's nothing more perfect on the market than that than that spool. All right, so one of the things I want to talk about before we get out on the waters, I want to talk about the different baits that I'm going to use. I've only got a few with me today, but all of them are pretty similar, okay? I typically, like I said earlier, I like to use beaver style creature baits. 13 Fishing makes one, it's called the Invader. Um, I and I run a rage bug and that typically is about it so the invader and the rage well that's what i have in the boat with me right now other things that i'll throw in the in the fall i want to throw like a bait fish imitator i'll put a paddle tail on there if i'm swimming it i'll, I'll put a fluke on there um i'll go to lighter color stuff things that i want to i want things that either look like a bluegill or i want baits that look like a shad and then i'm going to play around with the actions but we'll talk about that when we get on the water other than that i get away from the straight tail worms i get rid of, away from the ribbon tail worms i get away from the big soft plastics um the biggest one i'll probably use is something like a biffle bug which is about that long and like i said all these links will be down in the descriptions of the baits i talk about but uh a biffle gut bug's really good one of my favorite ways to fish is to throw it out and swim it uh, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. But let's get out on the water. Let's talk about the, uh, the techniques that I'll be using in the fall. All right, so this is a prime example of the stuff that I look for under the water in the backs of creeks and stuff like that. Look at these old stumps and things like that. They've been chewed off by beavers or, but you typically in, on, on reservoirs, when you get to the backs of the creeks, you find this kind of stuff under the water and the bass will get in there and they just have a heyday feeding on on, on bait fish. The, the shad push to the backs of the creeks in October and they really do get into this stuff. And it's a prime example of the kind of stuff you're gonna be fishing a Texas rig in. Look at all the things that, that you have to get snagged in. So a Texas rig is perfect for this because it can go in and out of that cover. What I want to talk about is how to fish that kind of stuff or what my favorite way is. When I'm in the backs of the creeks, I still want to have a bait that's moving. I want to cover as much area as I can and I want to bump that cover as much as I can. So I'm not going to be flipping to each individual bush unless the fish are in a funk. Typically, the first thing I'm going to do with a soft plastic with a Texas rig is I'm going to swim it. And you can use anything that's got stuff that kicks is basically what I say. They make swimming worms like the cutter worm from Rage Tail or the speed worm from, from zoom those are great for this kind of stuff especially if you got grass mixed in stuff like that but i love to fish a beaver bait a beaver style bait this is the invader but i also do a rage bug like i said but you cast it out and you just start to reel it in and no that's not it when you pull it up to those sticks you'll feel it coming up to those sticks and bump it as soon as it bump when it gets to the one of those sticks and bumps it i'm either going to stop reeling and let it fall a little bit or I'm gonna just pull it through with my rod tip and let it bounce over top of that stuff. All right, so in the fall, the bass move shallow and they move up these creek arms and they go towards the back of the creek. And the reason they do is because that's where the bait fish go. Um, and I'm looking for creeks and pockets that have water running into the back of them. That fresh water, for some reason, especially later on in the fall, that's where the bass, the, the bait fish are heading because I think that's where the majority of their food is that time of the year. So when you hit that period of time where they're moving back, the bait, the bass are going to be shallow. They're going to be in cover like this, uh, hanging out, waiting for bait fish to swim by. And that's when a Texas rig is perfect. That's when you get to flipping and pitching. You know, pitching up into that thick cover and letting it fall down and setting the hook and pulling fish out. That's when you need that heavier line. That 15 to 17 pound test is fine. That's when I bump it up to 20 sometimes, but don't sweat that. That's no big deal. Fish what you've got on your rod. Flip it in there, you bounce it around, but you can cover a lot of this kind of stuff with a Texas rig. And in between lay downs and brush piles, you can be swimming it just like we did a second ago. But learn how to flip and pitch. I'll put that video right up, up here. It's one of the old videos that I did on how to pitch and flip. And I, I can flip and pitch with both hands because I practiced it. I used to suck at it. I used to always have to be able to pitch with my right. I have to pitch with my right hand, but now I can do it with both. But we're, as you work your way back into the creek, focus on these lay downs. Focus on the rock piles. Focus on the, the, the secondary points that are coming off. Any place where the bass is going to stop an ambush bait is perfect for this. All right, so the last way I'm going to be fishing it, or one of the main, actually, let's do, let's do it this way. The main way that I'm going to be fishing this is as I'm moving into the backs of these creeks, I've got these secondary points that kind of stick out, and bass will, will hang out right about where the where you can't see the bottom anymore. They'll hang out and wait for these bait fish to swim by. And if you've got no cover, you're not working through any cover, the best way to do this is just to hop and let it fall. Hop and let it fall. Start my rod at about... 10 o'clock and I hop up to 11 and I let it fall 
and I hop and I let it fall. Oh, there's my right there. I was sitting there trying to figure out how I was going to explain. Oops, got off. Explain how to do this, and I got bit. But hitting the, the those secondary points like that with a Texas rig and just hopping it like that is going to get you bit. It, I mean it's it's a reaction strike that bass didn't want to bite my bait he just wanted to to figure out what it was because it was moving so fast there's one oh <laughs> love love fishing the texas rig it is so much fun if you're new at this if you're old at this if you consider yourself an expert if you ain't fishing a texas rig you're missing out but seriously if you're new at fishing this is a foundational bait this is a bait that you can use from now until the end of your fishing life to catch bass and it and it and you fish anything on it it really does you really do and and you can fish it all year long uh change the actions change the baits change everything but use a texas rig all the time and you're going to catch fish plain and simple but hope you enjoyed this video. Like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out of the water. Go out and catch some fish and have a great day. We'll see you.